Hello, this is David Wormsey. This is a quick video to share a couple of layout cheats I discovered while using Beaver Builder's rectangle row shape. And I've been using this under certain circumstances to create that effect where you have content appearing to break out of the row that's containing it. I've also been using it to create this split screen effect. What prompted me to do this video was a question that was asked yesterday on the Beaver Builder Facebook group. The poster there had been on the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builders page for their business reviews module. And as we can see halfway down here, we have this row where it appears that content is appearing both above the row and also below. But also on this page, we have something that we more commonly see where we have this content here sneaking up into the row above. So I just wanted to show how you could do this with the rectangle row shape. So I've knocked up something very similar here and there'll be a link to it below the video. But first, I just wanted to share why you might wanna consider this way of doing things. So I've done what I would normally do to create this effect. I've created two rows here. I have this content in the lower row and what I've done is I've used a negative margin on the column itself to budget up to the next row so let me just show you there it is on the top margin we've got minus 130 pixels and this is fine there are some people out there who don't like to use negative margins at all it's not exactly a hack but under certain circumstances it can create problems when browsing with Firefox. So it's something that I would tend to avoid if I can. But the main issue for me is when I have clients that need to go in and edit things. If I have this creeping up into the next row, then I get this kind of UI problem where it's difficult for someone to find who doesn't know what's going on, how to edit this title over here. So what I've done instead to create the, exactly the same effect is to just contain everything within the same row, all the content there so there's no problem for the client and to mock this up by using the shape to create the color of the row below. Obviously this has its limitations. If it's a photograph below in the row, this isn't going to work at all. And there is one other consideration. If you've got a background image here, that's gonna stretch for the whole area, including the area that's not seen. So, you know, it might stretch your images more than you expected, but as you can see here, really, it doesn't make any difference in this case. So it's a really simple thing to do. You just need to go into the row settings. And in this case, I've selected the top shape I could have selected the bottom one set it to rectangle of course I've set this to percentage as well so it moves responsively to 35% uh, and I've lined it to the bottom center and I've used the color fill here to match the row below which is white and it's as simple as that and exactly the same to create that other effect where it's creeping out above and below I've used both the top and the bottom let me just show you the screenshot of this so so here we are on the top shape. I've set this one to top center, 15%. And I'm just showing this. I've not needed to do this before, but for some reason on this layout, I was getting one line. So I've just offset that one line that's peeping through by a minus one here. And then I've just increased the height on this. You probably won't need to do that. Okay, and there was just one other thing to say on this. You may possibly need to use the shapes in the row themselves. Well, you can kind of do that. So I've got a shape here on this row and I'm using the top and the bottom to create the same effect. So I don't have a screenshot for that. So let me just go in to the top row here and I should go down and I think it's on the bottom shape. So what I've done here is I've matched the color to the top in this case and I need to just creep back up a bit and I've offset this by minus 30 and it's just brought this into this row and this will work as long as you leave it with the defaults. The default is for these shapes is for them not to clip but if I clip it of course it's just going to show the shapes within the row above so let me just show you. Yes, it just disappears there. So I think that covers this. I just need to move on to the split screen, which is fairly simple. I must thank 
Puneet from Power Pack for this because he shared this on the Beaver Builder Facebook group. And I kind of had discovered it before, but without him reminding me of it, I don't think I would have used it as a replacement for negative margins at all. So I'm very grateful to him for that. But it's fairly simple with this. Instead of having to line up and sort out for responsive settings all of the columns so it retains this split screen as you narrow down your browser, you can just do this and it's really simple to set up so again rectangle of course we've set it to percentages 50% width and 100% height and I've lined this one to the top left with the black color here and I think that is everything there was just one other thing I've just included on this page and that's a little bit of CSS if you just notice I like to kind of add this bit see it there a little bit of lift in there so if anybody wants to just take that snippet it's quite useful okay i think that's enough for me thank you very much for listening to me if you did like this then please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if this is the kind of video that you like and perhaps pressing the notification bell so you'll hear the next one that i do anyway enough for me thanks again bye bye